So suppose that we start with a filled-in triangle, maybe something like, like this, and imagine it, uh, actually let's imagine white being filled in here just for simplicity. Now suppose we connect the midpoints of each of these, of each side, and then we remove that middle triangle. So I'm gonna do that to say that's removed. Now we repeat the process. On each remaining triangle, we connect the midpoints, and we remove the middle triangle. And again, we repeat the process. On each remaining triangle, we connect the midpoints, and remove the middle triangle. Now you can imagine, this is a process that we could continue for as many times as we wanted to. Uh, if you want to see a slightly prettier version of that, uh, here we go. So there's my initial, uh, after the middle first triangle, first step, after the middle triangle is removed, step two, removing the middle of each of them, step three. And if we continue this, uh, es essentially indefinitely, we're imagining the result of this shape if this process were to continue forever. Um, the result would look something like this, and it's called the Sierpinski gasket or Sierpinski triangle. And it, uh, exhibits this beha um, self-similar behavior. The idea being that if we were look at just a portion of the whole, that that piece, if we were to zoom in, looks identical to the whole. And that's the idea of self-similar. In fact, if we were to zoom in here, it looks identical to the whole. If we were to zoom in here, it looks identical to the whole. And that is the idea of self-similarity. Now, we can generate self-similar, uh, shapes using an idea called initiators and generators. So the idea is, the initiator, in this case, is a line, and the generator says, at each step, replace each instance of the initiator with a scaled copy of the generator. So in step zero, at the very beginning, uh, we start out with just a line. In step one, we take that line segment and we replace it with a copy of the generator. In step two, we're going to take this and we're going to replace each line segment, and notice there are now one, two, three, four line segments with a copy of the generator. So we're gonna take this here, and each of these line segments is gonna get replaced with a copy, possibly, in this case, notice these ones are rotated, but is replaced with a copy of the generator leaving us with, oh no, I erased too much. Uh, we're leaving us with this shape as our step two. Uh, in step three, we repeat that again. In this case, again, replacing each of these little line segments with a scaled copy of the generator. So now we'll have... <laughs> I think I enlarged a little bit there, but you can follow along here. And there's half of it, and then we come down the other side. Notice each line segment here got replaced with a copy of that generator and it looks something like that. And if we were to conti continue this process over and over again, we get this shape called the Koch curve. And if you put, th uh, three of them together, you get a really nice little picture called the Koch snowflake. Uh, and this is an example of an iterated fractal that is, again, self-similar because this portion looks identical to the whole. So if we were to zoom in, this piece would look identical to the whole.